Chris Quinn for The Chris Quinn Show. I'm with Michael Slattery, who's Director of Environmental Studies at Texas Christian University. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about wind, the environment, and energy, and the role that wind is really kind of taking place today, really here in Texas more than anything. Yeah, wind is... Um... You know, wind has been part of our uh, generation technologies here in Texas for quite a while, but really in the last five to seven years, it's, it's taken off. It's more than doubled since 2010. Uh, it's no longer, I think, seen as just a, a, a niche uh, market. It's become uh, a major player, even more so than nuclear in the state. So it's a, it's a very robust environment for wind. Application. How is wind being used today? Well, wind's being used uh, principally for uh, electricity. Uh, and, you know, the, the drawback to wind uh, in sort of the late OZ's early, early part of this decade was the lack of a transmission to get it into the, into the houses. Now that the, the grid is there, uh, the application is getting directly into getting those electrons directly into the grid and into the, the big cities here in Texas. Okay. When we think about energy, I don't know, wind isn't necessarily the first thing we think about. No, I think that's right. I think when we think about energy, maybe uh, especially in Texas, you know, we think about oil and gas. I mean, it's the oil and gas state. Um, but Texas is also the wind state. I mean, we have more than three times the installed capacity than any other state. Um, and I think that's, that's either often forgotten or is not really communicated very well. So wind is, is very, very big here in Texas and is only growing. Well, and also I know there's certain parts, I guess, of West Texas I go out to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look and you see literally acres and acres of wind farms, right? No, that's right. It's, it's always funny when I talk to my colleagues in the wind industry in Europe and they talk about a large European wind farm being 50 to 75 turbines. And, of course, in Texas, everything is bigger and yeah. better. And a Texas wind farm, if it's two, 300 turbines, it's a, it's a pretty average size. But the largest wind farms in the world are in West Texas, five, six, 700 turbines on a, on a particular farm. Okay, so how do, we, how do we raise that awareness, if you will? How do we build more awareness towards what the capability of wind, if you will? Well, I, th I mean, I think we do, one, what we're doing right here, right? We, we get to talk to the media. Uh, I think education is absolutely key, getting out into schools, uh, universities, community colleges, and so on. But also, you know, getting into, into the industry. I mean, I talk, I just last, last week I was down at the Women's Energy Network in Dallas, uh, I think it's very important for people in the fossil fuel industry to come and talk to quote-unquote environmentalists and people in the, in the wind and solar and renewable space to go and talk to people in ONG because I think it's very often portrayed as an either-or, that it either has to be wind and solar at the expense of everything else or vice versa, and I simply don't think that's true. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second mm. because it does seem like it. Why have we come to that kind of either-or mentality? Well, I think there's, there's probably, you know, some very deep roots, obviously, uh, in oil and gas in a place like Texas. Uh, the reality is that fossil fuels are the backbone of the grid, right? Uh, wind and solar are non-dispatchable. They're intermittent. Uh, and I think people perhaps, uh, and this may just be my perception in being involved in wind over the last decade or so, is that people don't, don't like, you know, their industry being encroached upon. Uh, perhaps some in ONG think that wind is coming to, to take their place. And I think... Uh, that's probably not the case, but if you're in the coal industry, you probably are a little more worried about wind than you are in the, in the natural gas industry, I think. How has this new administration changed your perspective, or, I mean, has it helped or hurt the well, industry, or...? Well, I don't, I don't think it's done either yet for the wind industry. Okay. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to be completely frank about it, uh, you know, we're concerned, obviously, at this, at this current administration, uh, especially... Uh, when you hear things like, you know, making coal great again. I, I mean, I think that's extremely naive, to be totally honest. Uh, I think those coal jobs are not coming back. Uh, but I think that the states are so important and so powerful. You know, wind has been so successful in Texas, and it's been successful in Texas with Republican governors, as a, with a Republican administration. So I think, I think what's going on in Washington, to be honest, is going to have very little impact as to what's going on here in Texas. What are the questions we should be asking? Well, I think the questions are, how do we do things more efficiently? How do we do things more cleanly? Uh, uh, in terms of, you know, the U.S. Uh, and, and close to home. But in a, in a bigger picture, it's, it's how are we going to power the world? You know, we've got another 2.5 billion people coming along. Those people are going to want to do two things, like humans. They're going to want to reproduce, and they're going to want to improve their, you know, their human condition. And uh, to improve one's human condition, depends upon energy and depends upon electricity. So how do we get 
500 million people electricity in India in a clean and efficient way. I think that's, the, that's part of the grand challenge uh, in, you know, in, the, in the global sense. You're also very involved with the environment. Mm. Talk to me about how that comes together with wind. Well, you know, I, I think what I always say is no single generation uh, source uh, comes free of charge, right? Whether that's, you know, dollars and cents, but also from an environmental perspective. Every single generation technology has an, in, an environmental impact. I think that's very important to get out there. So the question is, what price are we willing to pay? How do we trade off, for example, issues surrounding visual pollution, perhaps? Some people don't like to look at wind turbines or issues relating to uh, how they impact uh, birds and bats in terms of you know, avian morti mortality. How do we trade those issues off against the potential for putting more and more carbon into the atmosphere, mercury pollution from coal-fired power plants, methane leakage from the, the gas industry, you know, impacting the desert tortoise when you're putting up solar, solar farms. I mean, everything comes with a price. Um, and I think it's very important to be able to have those conversations uh, about the environmental trade-offs uh, openly and, and honestly and in a very transparent way so we can make you know, good decisions down the line. Great. You're involved with this rhino conservation? Mm. Fair, I am. fair statement? Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's probably some methane energy involved in the rhino <laughs> conservation project, but uh, yeah, that's a, new, that's a new avenue for us. And, and it's, it's not unrelated in the sense that when you think about TCU's mission straight statement of ethical leadership, responsible citizenship, that involves, you know, energy, it involves people, it involves species, it, it's how we live our daily lives. So, uh, so the, Rhino, the Rhino Initiative has been very exciting. Great. How can we learn more about that? Uh, well, if you just go to planetrhino.com, that's our new website. It's a collaboration between TCU and a number of conservationists in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. It's an easy one, planetrhino.com, and it's, it's important because it's not just a repository of, of information, but it, it tells you how to get involved in this crisis. Great. We appreciate you being on the Chris Quinn Show. You're doing great things. Thank you. Part, thanks for being a part of the community. Thank you, and look forward to seeing you again on the other side. I'm Chris Quinn.